Let's talk a little bit about constellations and star charts. Um, the sky is actually divided up into 88 very specific constellations. And you know some of them because you've looked out at the night sky. Um, but through the course of this semester, hopefully you're going to learn an awful lot more. Now, the constellations, most of them have very ancient names. Um, ancient people named them for often what they resembled. Now, Scorpius, the scorpion, kind of looks like a scorpion. Here's this big curly tail, and then he's got pincers out here. So he looks like a, a, a big scary thing that would be scurrying across the floor and could potentially bite you. Now, Gemini represents the twins. Um, in Greek history, there is a story, uh, Greek mythology, there's a story of two um, cousins, I think they were, Pollux and Castor. And those are the names of the two brightest stars in the constellation Gemini. And they're supposed to be two cousins, or sometimes people refer to them as brothers, standing side by side. Sometimes constellations are named for what, for a legend or a hero or a story, and they don't look anything like what you think they should look. One of the things that I don't think looks anything like what it's supposed to is Cancer the Crab. Cancer the Crab looks like an upside down Y. Now, sometimes you'll see artistic interpretations that this is like one half of the crab and that's the other half of the crab and those are his little crabby feet. Um, but there's nothing out on the left and the right to give him, yeah, he just looks like a Y in the sky. Ursa, major, Ursa is bear, major is the largest. The big bear is the constellation that contains the Big Dipper. And again, I've looked into the night sky a lot and yeah, he doesn't look like a bear to me, but that's the story that was developed by ancient peoples. Now, where did these constellations come from? Now, there have been these traditional stories and traditional clusters of stars people have known about since ancient times. Back in 1930, the International Astronomical Union got very specific, divided up the entire night sky into different sections, weird shaped sections, but there are 88 of them. And every star is associated with just one constellation. So they were trying to get organized of, if they wanted to refer to this star, then it's in that constellation specifically. You are going to be asked to identify by picture some constellations for the midterm and the final. For the midterm, I'm going to ask the, for the zodiac constellations and the circumpolar constellations, constellations that circle the North Pole, uh, the pole star Polaris, every single night, ones that actually never set. So the zodiac constellations we have talked about, and I misspelled Aries. My apologies to all the Aries out there. Um, the circumpolar constellations include Cassiopeia, Draco, yes, just like Draco Malfoy, um, Ursa Minor, Ursa Major, Cepheus, and Camelopardalus. Yes, Camelopardalus kind of looks like a camel. By the final exam, all of the previous list plus the other major northern constellations, Andromeda, Aquila, Aruga, yes, it sounds like a car horn, Aruga, uh, Booties, Canis Major, Canis Minor, Corona Borealis, Cygnus, the Swan, Delphinius, Aquilus, Hercules, Hydra, the Water Snake, Lepus, the Rabbit, Leo Minor, Lynx, looks kind of like a lynx, Lyra, it looks like a lyre, which is kind of a fancy harp sort of thing, Monoceros, which is a unicorn, Orion, Pegasus, Perseus, another hunter, Serpents, kind of looks like a serpent, Sagitta, and triangulum. Now this is a flat map or chart of all of the constellations that are out there and this of course it's really you'll see pictures like this periodically where they're trying to take a, a spherical sky and put it on a flat piece of paper. Um, the ecliptic constellations go right through the center so let's go through our little mnemonic device again. A Time gone. Cowboys loved viewing. Little, little Libra with an eye, little with an eye. Little stars, Scorpius. Oh, a fucus, so cold and pretty. 
So this is our list of, of zodiac or ecliptic constellations. Depending upon the time of year, there are about 30 that are visible at one point in time in the Northern Hemisphere. We're going to concentrate on and worry about the Northern Hemisphere. You go to Australia on vacation, good for you, I want to go with you. Um, but then you're going to have to learn your own Southern constellation. So let's talk about some of the important ones. Circumpolar constellations are constellations that seem to circle um, the North Celestial Pole, and they never set. They're visible for us at our latitude every night of the year that we can see. So a couple of them, one of them is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is the queen of Ethiopia, and her constellation is pretty obvious. It looks like a big W. It's supposed to be a queen sitting in a chair, but to me it looks like a big W. Her husband, the king of Ethiopia, uh, is Cepheus. Cepheus, of course, here's Cassiopeia in the sky, and Cepheus is right next to him, and he looks like a big box with a dunce hat on him. Yeah, I don't think Cepheus was a dunce, but that's what it kind of looks like. Another northern circumpolar calculate, excuse me, constellation is Draco. Draco is the dragon. And yes, just like Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter, um, Draco is a very large constellation, circles a whole bunch of other constellations, but that is Draco. And it does kind of look like a big swooping dragon. Ursa Major, of course, the large major bear, the big bear, um, is the one that contains the Big Dipper. So how can you have a constellation contain something like the Big Dipper? Well, the Big Dipper, Dipper is something which is called an asterism, and you need to know that terminology. It's definitely fair game for quizzes. Um, an asterism is a familiar grouping of stars, but it's not an official constellation in that 88 constellations created by the International Astronomic Union. So that's what the Big Dipper actually is. Ursa Minor, also one of the circumpolar constellations, is the Little Bear. This is the Little Bear, the Lesser Bear, and his little tail is the North Star Polaris. We'll spend a lot of time talking about Polaris. Polaris is very important for navigation and for visualizing and seeing the motion of the other stars. In the spring, if you go out in a spring evening, um, you are likely to see some of these constellations. Booties, booties looks like a big kite. Uh, Virgo, Virgo the Virgin uh, is supposed to look like a lady reclining. So if you can kind of imagine, here's her head, her torso, her legs. I think she's got an arm outstretched. That's Virgo the Virgin. Go watch Lion King, the old Disney movie, one more time, because that's where I actually, many years ago, really got good at learning the constellation Leo, because they have this Leo constellation pops up in that movie a handful of times. I think my son was addicted to that movie when he was little. But this is depending upon the interpretation. Now, the way this picture is drawn, this is the head of the lion, and this is his butt. Um, some people actually draw the picture the other way around, where this is the face of the lion and that's his curvy tail. I don't care which direction your lion's facing, but that is Leo the lion. Summer constellations will also include uh, Cygnus the swan. Uh, it looks, sometimes it is called the northern cross, and this looks very much like a swan flying through the sky. It includes Hercules. There are three great hunters in uh, constellations, Orion, Hercules, and Perseus. Now, Hercules looks a lot like Orion, except Orion has three stars on his little belt buckle. Hercules only has two. And so Hercules is not the same shape. Um, and Hercules is kind of doing a dance and doing a little bit of a jig. So he's kind of Orion doing a jig. That's Hercules. Corona Borealis is another summer constellation you'll see on a summer evening. It's also called the Northern Crown, and it looks like a crown if you see it up in the sky. This is Lyra. Um, it's supposed to represent a lyre or a harp. Uh, so if you can kind of imagine, those are the strings of a little handheld harp. Fall constellations include Andromeda, Aquarius, Pisces, Capricorn, and Pegasus. Andromeda is also a princess, and she's supposed to be lounging. So this is a lady kind of lounging. 
Yeah, it's hard to see this one too. Again, some people draw this as the top of her body. Some people have her lounging this way and her legs and she's got an arm hanging out. Um, Andromeda is hard. I've got to admit that's a hard one. Pisces, Pisces the fish is supposed to be a fish here, a fish here, and they are connected by a fishing line. Uh, they are near a constellation that looks like a big square, and that is the great square of Pegasus, very visible in a fall sky. In the winter, nice cold winter night, you're coming home from a Christmas party or something, uh, you're going to see a lot of these beautiful constellations. Of course, Orion, Orion with those three stars along his belt, his arrow and his sword arm raised. Um, Canis Major, the larger dog, is this one. And Canis Major is looks like just uh, two lines. It's hard to see a dog there. Yeah, I know. But Canis Major is actually the dog that is following an Orion. Um, Orion also is hunting. He's a big hunter. And who's he hunting? He's hunting Taurus the bull. Now, this is supposed to be the bull constellation. This is the bull's face. He's got a very bright star here, Aldebaran. Um, and Orion's hunting the bull because the bull is chasing the Pleiades. The Pleiades are cluster, not a constellation, but a cluster of stars that are very bright, and they are known as the Seven Sisters. And this is Canis Major, happens to be Orion's dog. So there are little stories to help make sense out of some of these. I didn't go through all of them. We will spend some time working on constellations all semester. You can't pick them up instantly. If you go to the Southern Hemisphere, very different sky. Constellations we never see. Uh, Carina, Centaurus, Ara, Pavo, Tuscana, which looks supposed to look like a toucan. Uh, Horologium, I can never say that really well. That's supposed to look like a clock. There are a whole bunch that we in the Northern Hemisphere never see. So you do not have to learn those, but they're kind of fun because the words pop up in astrology. Astronomy. I said astrology. Oops. All right. That will do for this one. We'll come back and we'll start talking about stuff that's on star charts.